Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to make a quick video today to talk about my decision framework for deciding to keep my son home from school today um, in lieu of the coronavirus. I posted on Facebook last night uh, that I was going to be keeping him home from school after a message that I received from our district superintendent. And I know it caused a lot of different people to give feedback and ask a lot of questions. And I feel like what was good about it is that it opened up a form of discussion. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I came to this conclusion for myself to you know, give other people things to think about. By all means, just because I feel like that's what I wanna do for my family, it doesn't mean that everybody needs to do that. Um, some of the factors that I'm using to make this decision aren't gonna be present in everybody's circumstances. Some of the circumstances that other people have aren't present in my circumstance. But I just kinda of wanted to go through this really quick. Well, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mimi Narte. This channel, Mom Peditor by Mimi Narte, is all about modern motherhood. I talk about entrepreneurship, motherhood, family, fashion, those kind of things. So please consider subscribing. I really wasn't planning to shoot a video at all this week. I have a few videos that I've already done and already edited, and I'm just gonna kind of roll them out. That was my plan. But in the face of this, a new circumstance, I thought, you know, it'd probably be a good idea to make a video so that way I can create another platform for conversation for other moms, parents, and just the general public that's concerned about public health and safety. So I will go ahead and explain that I have a education and experience in public health. I taught classes in public health, environmental science, and environmental health for many years at three top universities in Southern California. So I would say that I have some familiarity that would be helpful to me also in kind of looking at a potential uh, epidemic. In addition to my studies and teaching experience, I also did research in drug development for parasitic disease, malaria. So I have had many years of experience thinking about uh, disease epidemic outbreaks and different kinds of factors to look at. All right, so what we do understand about coronavirus is that it is highly contagious. And when we say contagious, we're talking about the measure of how the disease spreads from one person to another person. The virulence is really what is in question. It doesn't seem so far that the virulence may be more severe than other diseases that we have prevalent in our society. Uh, that's what the argument is uh, that this is comparable to the flu. But I think that um, what we see is that for certain populations and for certain age groups, uh, it is more virulent than for others. So last night I received a voicemail from our district superintendent just letting us know that we would be ceasing all school gatherings, uh, such as sporting events and school assemblies to try to be in compliance with the suggested mandate for social isolation. And I think one of the tenets of that mandate is to um, not have gatherings of people of 200 or 250 or more. So I think that's part of the impetus for wanting to stop the meetings and the gatherings. But I'm thinking to myself, isn't school itself a gathering? Isn't it, doesn't it qualify? Isn't that something that, you know, should probably be eliminated in the interest of public health? Now, there are several reasons why we probably wouldn't want to shut down schools. Like I think from the government's perspective, we can't shut down schools because school provides such important social intervention for uh, children that are in need. I think probably around 70% is a number that I heard. I, I need to fact check that, but about 70% of the students in LAUSD qualify for free and reduced lunch. So what we just have to take from that number is that several of the students who are attending school uh, actually, you know, one of the main benefits is that they're going to get their nutrition from that school. And also we have to take into consideration the financial burden that childcare would put on, uh, you know, most families if their children were to stay home from school. Big burden, big issue. We have to appreciate that right now we just don't have policies in place that would guarantee any paid sick leave for people who are trying to self-quarantine or for people who are trying to care for sick family members. So that's kind of a bigger picture problem to consider. Of course, we are going to continue practicing the public health safety measures that have been suggested to us in terms of 
hand washing and other sanitization strategies and uh, you know the social distancing. Uh, but for me, because I am asthmatic, I would fall into a vulnerable population. So, you know, something like coronavirus, people are trying to liken it to the flu, which is not actually accurate. Uh, but I would be at risk if I contracted something like that of having greater complication. So that's really an important part of my decision making when it comes to pulling my children out of school. You know, maybe for you, getting the flu is not that big of a deal, but I've had a flu that has turned into bronchitis that's become borderline pneumonia. So just, I'm not really willing to uh, do that. And I feel like when I weigh the risk against, you know, the potential risks of keeping my son out of school for, a, you know, a few days or up to a week even, I think that it's a risk that's worth it for me. The other thing to think about is, uh, you know, for your own family, are your children going to come into contact with other senior people or other people who could fall potentially into that pool of vulnerable uh, people, a vulnerable population? So someone who is elderly, somebody who has, you know, cystic fibrosis, any other kind of, you know, upper respiratory, uh, any kind of compromised uh, respiratory uh, condition. I think all in all, I've just always been in support of the precautionary principle, which is just the idea that, you know, if we're uncertain, we should take our best precautionary measures to prevent what we suspect could be a negative outcome or a negative uh, consequence. And especially when uh, the other side of the risk is something that can be mitigated or mediated. And maybe it's not something that can be mediated or mitigated at the governmental level, but I feel that at the individual level, it is something that I can do. And I feel engaged in a social contract and a responsibility, not just to myself, but to other people. And I just think that this is, you know, what's in the best interest of public health. There is a difference between being fearful or fear mongering and trying to be prudent and trying to be wise and trying to be considerate of the risk and vulnerability that other people may be experiencing. And to be honest, I did have every intention of sending my child to school today, uh, but it was really the message that I had received last night from the district that was the tipping point because I just did not feel like the information was reconcilable uh, with my own uh, judgment that we would be dissuading congregations like a school assembly, but we would still hold school and have things like lunch and recess where we, and even, you know, just the children on the school campus in the same facility using the same keyboards, et cetera, uh, and not see that or interpret that as a risk. And I know that several of the private school institutions near us have already closed down school, even a couple of the charter schools. So I, you know, hopefully um, this is a decision that is imminent, but in the meantime, again, because of my personal level of risk and vulnerability and knowing that my children could potentially be interacting with uh, other family members that we have that fall into the more vulnerable age bracket, this is something that's just not going to uh, work out for us over the next couple of days. So again, I just want to restate because I cannot state enough that this is not about making you feel fearful. I do you know, believe that this is a situation that can and will be controlled. I have faith in our government and in our public health system. I do think that our system is going to need time to set up you know, the infrastructure that it needs to be able to address this. And in the meantime, I just think everybody should be extra cautious until a time where we have developed a suitable plan of action that can also be implemented, um, you know, and there's gonna be a little bit of a runway necessary to make that happen. Don't panic, you don't need to go out and buy up all this toilet paper. <laughs> My suggestion is to really be calmly proactive. So look at what that means. Please make sure you're following the best practices that are in place and be considerate as to whether you or someone else has that additional vulnerability that might require a higher level of action as a, a precautionary measure or precautionary step. There is just so much information and the quality of the information is just all over the place. But what I will do is I will link below some articles that I think could be helpful in you know, just helping you understand what the impact of this epidemic is and what some of the best practices and suggestions are from you know, 
as credible public health sources as I can kind of find right now. So hopefully this will be helpful to you and help you be able to make great decisions for your family and stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks for watching.